Hello again, everybody. Welcome back to the Prog Hat channel. Thanks for uh, tuning in, stopping by, and uh, checking out my video here and my other videos. Well, I wanted to come back and do this video that I had an idea to do a while back, but I'm just now getting around to it. Um, this video is my top 10 favorite albums from 1979 yes it's a ranking from 10 to number one um 1979 i was 11 years old and in junior high school and i do remember that was a time exciting time for me because i remember that christmas i got the sony walkman and I really thought that was really cool um, to carry around CDs and listening to them. There was also the debut, and I, maybe somebody might correct me on this, of McDonald's Happy Meal. Yeah, a lot of good movies came out. Of course, there was political things going on, but I'm not going to get into any of that. But the big movie of that year was Superman and also Aliens. Or Alien, excuse me, or is it Aliens? Where Sigourney Weaver came out. And another one of my favorite movies came out that year. And that was with the Ramones, Rock and Roll High School. So those are some things that uh, I reminisce about that year. And remember uh, 1979 um, was a good year for me. I, I just remember that was another year growing and learning more about music and getting into some different genres of types of music around that time. So let me just go ahead and get into my top 10 at number 10 is one of my favorite double albums. And that is Fleetwood Mac Tusk. Such a great double album. Um, what can I say? Just great rock and roll, pop rock. Um, one of the hits that was on the radio was Sarah, but I also like Save Me a Place, uh, Think About Me, and Sisters of the Moon. They just don't make great double albums anymore, in my opinion. Maybe there is to some folks, but I just remember back then in the 70s, early 80s, maybe even through the 80s, bands were would come out with a really good uh, double album. This one right here is really, really good. I, I really do like that album a lot. Okay, moving on, folks. At number nine is a band that I liked. And when I first heard uh, Sultan the Swing, Swing, excuse me, on the radio, I thought it was a George Harrison song. I don't know why. I was young, but this is number nine on my list, and this is Darius Straits' Communique or Communique. Love this record. Great sounding record. Once Upon a Time in the West. Uh, got radio play around here, and I also love Lady Writer and Ancient, I mean, excuse me, Angel of Mercy. And I like the song News. So that's my uh, number nine. Moving on to number eight. When I got into this band, I didn't understand the kind of music they were doing, but I knew I liked it. I knew I liked the different, what do you call it, rhythms they brought, different ideas they brought to the construction, to some of their songs for the album. At my number eight is The Talking Heads' Fear of Music. This is a reissue copy that I have. I don't. I, is it a colored vinyl? I don't, I think it is. So let me see if we can share that. But yeah, I believe this is, came out a few years ago as a Rocktober. But I just love this record. So uh, it's one of my favorites. Uh, this is the one that has "Life During Wartime." Uh, I Zombra or Zombras. Um, there's a album made with uh, Brian Eno. So. That is number eight. Number seven is a just a 
straight up rock and roll album. Um, it's real good. Um, and I remember when I first heard that song, Rock and Roll Fantasy on the radio, I went, uh, I lived, I, at that time I was living in a small Texas town and I went to a store called Gibson's and I bought the 45 of Rock and Roll Fantasy and I like the flip side too as well. Um, I'm talking about Bad Company's Desolation Angels. Just pure rock and roll. Good old Bad Company rock and roll. Uh, that was the song, I believe, on the other side. Gone, Gone, Gone. Oh, Atlanta. Uh, Evil Win Early in the Morning. This whole album from uh, good uh, from beginning to end and produced by the band. And still to this day, I listen to this record quite a bit as well as these other records I've just shown. And when I hear that song, Rock and Roll Fantasy, it's time to crank it up on the radio. All right, here, that's 10, 9, 8, 7, at number 6. We're almost to number 1. Candy O by The Cars. I love this record. I'm a big Cars fan. I love the guitar playing of uh, Elliot Easton. He's a great guitar player. Roy Thomas Baker, producer. This album had Let's Go. Um, Candy O is such a great song. Dangerous Type. Double Life. Um, yeah, from beginning, another album that just about every Cars album, even Door to Door, has a handful of great songs on their records. I'm still trying to find their debut album. I do have it. But it's really warped, and I didn't know that. But And so every once in a while, I'll take a look to see if I come across it. So that's number six. Now we're at number five. And at number five is another, I, I say it's a really good rock and roll record with some good ballads on it or melodic style. Paul McCartney, Wings, Back to the Egg. Yeah. Uh the tune uh, "Getting Closer," that song rocks. I really, uh, I really love that song. The first side of the album is my favorite. It's what they call the "Sunny Side Up," and the other one is the other side is "Over Easy." But that whole beginning of the record with the little reception coming in, "Getting Closer," "We're Open Tonight," "Spin It On." Again and again and again, oh, Siam, sir, and the ballad, Arrow Through Me. Even the other side is so good. Um, I'm looking forward. I'm hoping they'll get around and do an archive collection on this. And what I mean by that is uh, deep, deep in the archives and do a deluxe edition of this album, Back to the Egg. Hopefully we'll get it soon. So that's number five, another great rock album. At number four is another classic Neil Young album that when I first heard it, you know, I was wondering, it was, is it live? But it's so quiet. But yeah, and that's uh, Neil Young and Crazy Horse, Rush Never Sleeps. Another great album that is from start to finish. So, so good. I love the My My Hey Hey I once was part of this band, and that was a song that I remember having to learn because that's a song that they used to open up their um, set with. And I was in that band just for a short, brief time, and I learned how to play some bass. They needed a bass player, so it was a learning experience. Uh, I learned some stuff about playing with others and getting along with others. And uh, anyway, Thrasher, Ride My Llama, Pocahontas, Sell Away, Welfare Mothers. I mean, this album was just uh, Powder Finger. Just this album from beginning to end is another great classic rock album from the past. Still love playing this record a lot, too, as well. All right, folks. And we are at number three. Number three. This one is kind of sad because this is the album where the legendary drummer John Bottom later on passed away. I never got to see 
I've never seen Led Zeppelin live, but I did see Jimmy Page and The Firm with my bro live. My brother, excuse me. What I mean by bro, my real brother. Uh, and we saw The Firm. We got to see Jimmy Page live, and that was great. But I love Into the Outdoor, an album that I feel like you could tell what was coming, that Led Zeppelin was just kept on transitioning to more great songs. And Into the Outdoor has a lot. I mean, another album, beginning to end, I love every song. I love The Closer, uh, I'm Going to Crawl. I think it's a great blues rock ballad, All My Love. Um don't know how to say that title of that song on side B, but it's one of my favorite. I love the rhythm and that da -da 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 -da, those keyboards. I just this is a simply really good record. Kind of a dark record in some parts of it. The music. All right, folks. Number two. This album just celebrated an anniversary. And I hope to one day get the uh, deluxe edition of this. But I remember when this album came out. That song, Refugee, just when I heard it, I was like, what is that? That is really good rock and roll. And it's Damn the Torpedoes by Tom Petty and the Heartbreakers. This is my number two, my second favorite from 1979. Album is good from beginning to end. You get some country, you get some rock. I mean, Tom Petty just, and the Heartbreakers, made such a great, great record. It's one, It's a, I consider this, for me, one of those albums that's a part of me that hangs around me, an album that I'll never let go because when I first got it, it was at a time, getting ready to head toward pretty soon noon to, to high school. And, you know, it, it's just one of those records that wherever you go, for me in my life, even as an adult, as I'm getting older, this album will always have that place in my heart to continue to uh, listen to as I do to this day. Don't do me like that. Louisiana Rain, great closer. Uh, Shadow of a Doubt. The other day I was, I had that song on repeat for the longest time on my Spotify. I just couldn't get enough of that. Even the losers, hey, they get lucky sometimes. That's true. Now, for my all-time favorite number one album of 1979. You, some of you that do watch me and follow me on Instagram, you might know what it is. So here we go, folks. And I remember this was the album. I don't know how old I was, but one of my friends gave me this album. Now, this ain't that copy. But he gave it to me for my birthday, and it was like I was hooked, and I'm still a Van Halen fan. Eddie Van Halen, rest in peace. My favorite album of 1979, folks, is Van Halen 2. I love this record from beginning to end. What a follow-up to their debut album. To go back in the studio and put this album together, and I, I don't remember what I, I, well, I don't, I hope I'm correct in saying, I think this album was put together in under three weeks. Man, to come out with this album with every song just being so, so good. I mean, I love um, their cover version of You're No Good. They make it their own. That's one thing about Van Halen when they do a cover or remake of a song, they make it their own. It's like they wrote it. Uh, Out of Love Again. I mean, there's some class. Somebody get me a doctor. I remember that used to get a lot of airplay around here. Dance the Night Away is a classic. I mean, go, go listen to that virtuoso guitar playing Eddie Van Halen does on Dance the Night Away. Light Up the Sky, Women in Love. I mean... It's just a killer, killer Van Halen record. And sometimes it gets harder for me when I listen to my Van Halen collection over again. Like, what's really my favorite? It's Women and Children, Fair Warning, Van Halen 2, Diver. I just, I just love all the records. And 
Can I have all of them at number one on my list? I do. But yeah, folks, I'm still playing, getting ready to turn 57 or 58 this year, and I'm still jamming out to Van Halen. I just a band that I never let go of this album. It's one of those albums that's just like, that good old raincoat that you just put on and it, you just go everywhere in the rain and you got some good music. This album right here, soundtrack to my life, to my early years. Well, folks, I hope you enjoyed this video. Those are my favorite albums of 1979. Not to say that the other albums that came out that year were bad or anything. Those were just as equally great records and I'm sure they're your personal favorites. Thanks for stop, stopping by. Leave me a comment, folks, and I'll see you on the next video. Take care.